when clients give briefs, right? I want wow. You can't translate that in healthcare to mean beautiful. I don't deny that it can't be soothing. The primary thing is it, it has to work for the reason it is yeah. supposed to be there. And then you do on top of it whatever you want. I can easily apply translucent images and nice and all. But when I look at the safety aspect, the font has to be big. You should show only two data points to the user. What is your oxygen flow? What is your breathing rate? That's it. You have to not think about just the digital experience. You have to think about whatever I'm designing is a tool I'm giving in the hand of physician or a nurse to deliver care. Rishi, welcome to the Yellow Couch. Thank you. Thank How does you. it feel to be here? Amazing, finally on the Yellow Couch, <laughs> yeah. the world famous. <laughs> yeah, I've been chasing you for a while. I'm glad we could finally make this happen. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having me. I wanted you on the Yellow Couch specifically because of your experience in two areas. One is the UX design field, which both of us were um, a part of in the early parts of our career. The second is your experience in the healthcare industry. And I think the convergence of those two is a really interesting topic because of how much uh, scope there is for improving patient experience, doctor experience. Uh, I think experience as a whole around everything to do with healthcare. I think there's a massive amount of opportunity there. So today, I just really wanted to get your views and opinions having been worked in that convergence for so long. You know, your hacks for working in this area and the things that um, you can tell us about what's coming in the future. So um, I'm going to use this uh, iPad as a reference so that I have a sense of the flow of this conversation. Sure. I guess I'll jump right in, Rishi, and I'm going to ask you, I mean, it's the first, I guess, eight to ten years of your career you were pu doing pure play UX design consulting so mm -hmm. it was across domains and then you went on to the healthcare side of things what was the difference in your first part and then just healthcare focus it takes me back ten years ago when I started purely in healthcare and uh, honestly I think uh, the all the time we spent and UX particularly working across the domain did that foundation <clears throat> because design is all about uh, experience people have in different different domains in different areas right and that built the foundation that when you apply to certain places you are able to you know folk understand their challenges mm -hmm. very closely and yeah. what the problems are when I started in healthcare the, there were a couple of problems people were very very uh, you know profoundly people were talking about that we need to make uh, physicians life product productivity was the main concern mm -hmm. And um, you know, we were all thinking about look, productivity is just important, it's a very important aspect that you want to make patients yeah. productive. But if you look at the core of it, right, mm. in the healthcare, but really all the use cases talk about the safety is the most important safety aspect. Safety is the most important. Because mm. uh, whatever you do in healthcare, the, the context of applying mm. the UX is very different. The right? consequences are, are big. Very big, very yeah, huge. It's a life and death exactly, consequence. Exactly. Mm. So, when you apply the health UX principles on all the journey scenarios mm. for physicians and all of them, it's not about digital experience, it's mm. about end of it that the care delivery to mm. a person who is suffering. Would it be safe to say that for the first part of your journey you were doing just UX and for the second part it was mission critical UX where the consequences of being wrong are very, too big? Too high, very high. Right, because somebody could die. Imagine, yeah, imagine that you design an interface and um, where the information is read incorrectly by the nurse, yeah. by the physician, right? You know, in India, you know that only two people can understand each other, the physician and the pharmacist. Right. What they write uh, on the prescription. My God, yes. Right? Yeah, that's so, so dangerous. Right. So it can be life-threatening to somebody. Mm. Patient can, if cannot read the ex ex exact dose, yeah. what dose they have to take how many, what frequency you have to take, right? Mm. Or the administration of the particular injection to a patient, if that is incorrect, all of that comes into picture. So I think those nuances like blown me away mm. that, you know, whatever you contribute from the experience mm. perspective, if you look at the end of it, the impact wow. is huge. The impact huge. is huge. impact is huge. So yeah. was your work largely in India? Was it abroad? Well, uh, CTS Tech largely works in the U.S. Uh, as a primary okay. market, right? So we worked in U.S., we worked in UAE for, for some time, but primarily mm. U.S. is our market, which is mm. a very mature market in, when it comes to healthcare because mm. um, it's a very well-governed, regulated, mm. and um, all the systems been in, in the place for very long. 
So yes, my primary experience has been the US market, mm. but yeah, healthcare is... When you compare healthcare as a designer in the healthcare space, healthcare in landscape in India versus the US, what what is your big picture analysis? It's a very good question actually. You know, in the US, like the way other industry were catching up and all, healthcare made the similar mistakes, right? Mm. But it was quite mature, the system was getting in place and all, so now mm. you have to get into and improvise it, right? And mm. then make it more patient-centric or, you know, mm. physician-centric. In India, the systems are still not in place. And and as a geography and as a, mm. as a population, we are very different from what the US market oh, so is. Also very heterogeneous. Very different, right? In terms of the way we are set up, mm. the way our social, the way we look at healthcare and oh. the socially, right? Okay. Versus what they look at in the healthcare and the US, it's mm. very different. Mm. So that model is, of course... What do you mean in, socially? Like in India, anything happens, it's all about first find out the remedies in house. Oh, okay. And you ask to your relatives and all of that. In US, it doesn't like. You ask that. your grandmother. You ask your grandmother, and most of the things you find out, you eat this, you eat this, you do that, and it will be okay. Most most time, we are okay with that. But the US is a very different market from that point mm. of view, right? The way people are socially, you know, interact with each other, social fabric governs. So that is a very different thing. So that informs their systems, their the way they handle it um, mm. in terms of regulations and all. I think when it you translate to India. A lot of mistakes which have happened, we can of mm. course avoid it, mm. avoid it completely, right? Mm. Um, like having a siloed systems and all mm. of that, have a more of unified so systems system. that talk to each other. Very, very. When important. did that happen in the U.S.? So I think it started uh, 30, 40 years. So does everyone the, have yeah. like one? So is everything linked to your SSN or? What's well, the unique ID through which? SSN is one, right? But mm. you also get MRN is created, your medical representative oh, so number. Oh, so you get like one medical ID. Yes, yes. And that is a big problem that they, you know, all the systems are very different. They don't talk to each other. Even as a, as a patient, I don't own my own data. So if I have to get it, then I'll have to get it from one system to other system. If I want to, you know, oh. if I move from one city to other city, from one hospital to other hospital, I will have to, you know, all do all of these exercises mm. and then system has to talk because I may have my medical history mm. or right for my so childhood. So this is in the US you're saying? This is in the US. It, they still don't have a nationwide holistic yeah. integrated system? No, no, because all the US So if I'm moving from one state to another state, I'll have to actually do effort to move my data. Everything in the US is governed through your insurance, right? If you're going, going to a state where the preferred doctor or the hospital which is in the close vicinity is not part of that network, Mm. then you have to get care which is out of network, right? Yeah. So there are a lot of these nuances that you are, your entire thing is governed, which policy, which insurance provider you yeah. are associated with, and then their network, how the network is covered, mm. covering you. Even and then, if you want to go outside, then either you'll have to pay from your, out of your pocket and all mm. of that, or you'll have to take your data to the mm. other you know, entity and all which is a very big problem and that's mm. a core of uh, the the problem because you know, it's on which is what interoperability is what yeah. is called is is a big challenge there. so india is trying to do this abha id what do you think about that no i think uh, see one thing would be sure that it will be make things life very mm. easy for the folks right mm. and i think if you learn from those what people have might have made mm. mistake there right that unified unified approach there so imagine in a in a remote village somebody is, has some cancer or something like that and they want mm. to come to Bombay or Delhi to a big hospital like Tata Memorial and all, if their data can directly be yeah, transported sent. there, mm. it will be like amazing. So, so do you have an ABHA ID? How do you get it? I don't have it yet. <laughs> no. I think government is just starting yeah, just around starting. Yeah. How long do you think it will take to actually become like an Aadhaar? See, Aadhaar was a revolution in itself yeah. and it happened in, you know, not like five years. That took time. That took time, but yeah. it was very fast and covered. Once it so kind of caught on, yeah. then it was pretty fast. Now, now look at our banking, UPI and all. Mm. It's all other driven. You can open your account. So anything. are you saying ABHA could do to healthcare what UPI did to digital payments? Exactly. Chances mm. are huge and uh, I think that's where, that's what we should be, we, mm. we might be leading towards. Yeah. And that makes sense as well. But uh, again, coming back to some of the nuances of our own things, yeah. right? You know, you can buy medicines from your yeah. Without any prescription Without and all yeah. of that. So those I think will still be available to folks so that yeah. some of the things are yeah. know, because we are we are very big company. Yeah. We are very big very as a big country. country right? yeah. We cannot uh, wait for days or year, you know, months <coughs> for the doctor to write me prescription to buy a particular medicine, right? That that will be like break everything. Mm. And it's very painful, right? Imagine mm. if you have a cold or headache and you can't get a medicine just because you don't have prescription yeah. for a day or two. 
you will be suffering for two days without medication right so, that is something we you know yeah. we can't afford as a mm. as a society right so mm. those aspects would be need to be built and i'm pretty sure that agencies and smart folks who are working behind it yeah. would keep that in mind and that's where that experience part of it yeah. play a big role yeah that you are involving the people the users the and the citizens in the process so that you make it more contextual for them so would it be safe to say that the digital transformation of healthcare in india is just starting now i think we're learning from aadhar our you yeah. know unification our successes with the pen in ubi and all of that and, and all yeah. of this thing play a very big role mm. see still lot of people don't have pan card right yeah. lot of people don't have it but that's why they went to aadhar now this our number will will be more yeah. available to the folks right so that should make a lot of difference when you started doing ux in healthcare was there a difference in the process in the design process i think overall as a process my my would remain same right mm. you do the research and all but but when the application of it nuances are very different right mm. in other areas where you are talking about delightful experience persuasion engagement mm. your choices in healthcare are more about identify oh. where the chances of potential risk and error Errors. going to happen right yeah. because i want to make sure that those loopholes so are the goals covered. are different goals are very yeah. different mm. right because those loopholes loopholes for the patient for the caregiver for the, you know anybody in the ecosystem mm. must be covered I- imagine that somebody was doing just the claim reimbursement just settling your claim If your claim get delayed, your surgery can get delayed. Yeah. Patient, the person can be on, you know, in pain for yeah. days. Wow, that is a huge impact. So I think that empathetic <laughs> approach, which is UX, is always about that. You need to really understand. gets exaggerated exactly. here. Exactly. Mm. I mean, imagine that, you know, you get a headache or mm. cold. You know, people are in healthcare space are working below their normal cognitive abilities. So digital interfaces, what you are designing for them. assume there is an accessibility challenge there because oh. remember the day when you had a headache how you know challenging yeah, it has been you can't were, even do your yeah. normal stuff you you are no you can't take some decisions and all of that mm. now you're designing interfaces or whatever digital touch point for people like them mm. so you have to be extra careful about understanding imagine somebody has you know fracture in hand how they going to use mobile phone wow. so accessibility challenges are higher and in healthcare tempor- mm. temporal accessibility is even bigger problem something could be inaccessible for because of your condition uh, so you have to be very very you know aligned with that interesting so we were i'll give an example so we were doing a research for one of our recent project we were working on small mobile app device as a companion app so patient has the puc portable oxygen concentrator right and for the 65 years mm. above of course mm. those kind of people have the copd disease and all So we were uh, interviewing, and the one one of the user didn't turn up. We called and we checked that you were supposed to come. We attended and this yeah. discussion took place. Yeah. There was a wildfire in the U.S. in his region. Oh my God! And he says that I cannot come because if I my doctor says said no, mm. because if I come out, I cannot I breathe. I can't breathe. Yeah. And my machine will go bad because of the pollution. So these kind of nuances. Wow. Now this is restricted that person in in house. Now, when you think about patient journey and all, that has to go in digital experience, mm. which you're probably telling the users about what that was, what your what your atmospheric conditions like. Mm. You have to be careful about your 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 you know select you know all mm. the equipments in the machine, which is filters and everything, so they are mm. all up to date. Because imagine you can't breathe for half mm. an hour. What would happen? It would be very traumatic. So uh, I would assume. that when you would do a design recommendation for a healthcare system is it tougher to get those things implemented and see them go live because healthcare tends to change very slowly and there are so many things to comply with unlike let's say any other kind of industry where i do a digital transformation it's likely to maybe move faster is that a safe assumption it's a very interesting thing so you know in healthcare you are working on the verge of innovation because most of the innovative innovation up, get applied to military or healthcare oh. may not be may not be at the digital front right mm. but anything related to your scanning your equipments which mm. is getting implanted and everything about you know in health or military mm. right? so at the one side of it when you look at the equipments and technology the applications is is a giga yes. gigabyte speed race but when it comes to the digital ecosystem because of the siloed nature of these different different systems such a paradox all, exactly so really innovative 
but but laggard in digital exactly exactly how is that so, even possible because you know when healthcare was always at the speed of implementing these equipment like mri machines and all of that mm. you know to get the healthcare sorted mm. but uh, i think they missed the end patient into the game mm. that how should we look at that so that you know the variation in speed mm. is where the challenge is so you have to bring that also in line mm. so that now satisfaction and then whole ecosystem works in hand in hand wow. together because this problem of siloed pro is because that you never considered these scenarios which is what so i i see three in areas where innovation like you said is kind of uh, trying to push the envelope one is defense military as yep. you said uh, second is medical science yeah. right because there is a inherent motivation for human beings to want to live longer live better lives and the third i would say is competitive sports yeah because it's all about beating the other person even with right. the smallest yeah. like if you see innovation in f1 small changes in your car can mean the exactly. difference between winning and yeah. losing but it's such an interesting point you make right even though you might be in an industry which is always on the bleeding edge or the cutting edge of innovation that doesn't mean that digitally they will be you're, ahead you're mature yeah enough right yeah wow such that's quite uh, evident right the way the people it struggle is. and all of that right yeah. so. because i mean the the machines etc in the surgery room or in the you know where you get your tests done they're also advanced yeah but when you go to the doctor's opd he's still with a pen and paper exactly so you know imagine the patient to take care of their health right they have five six digital interfaces to deal with there's a patient portal which has the clinical data there's a yeah. member portal which yeah. has your insurance data yeah there could be some wellness app which is all about yeah. how do you keep healthy uh there could be you know remote telehealth which is where you converse your doctor which may not be integrated with your yeah. clinical system and all right so you have easily four five apps in your probably mobile yeah. or thing which you have to deal with why can't that be unified so that you have a consistent experience across your journey i recently had a, a hospitalization experience for a close family as i was the primary caregiver and i had no digital interface to tell me what's going on keep me posted give me a platform to ask questions i mean it was so archaic that you would sit in the waiting room and a guard would come and physically call you so mm -hmm. if you are downstairs in the canteen having a chai uh, there is no way you would know that you're yeah. being called yeah. in the in the icu it's just no brainer that you should have a a little interface that sends you a little alert yeah and why does a watchman have to come and find you in 2024 in a good private hospital it just boggles my and, mind and that, that experience you're talking about, i think you will relate well that how traumatic it is to be lived through that yeah. experience for individual so that's what I, my point was that in other areas when we are designing for delight and engagement here the choices are very different mm. you are just waiting for one alert wow one alert. in fact people's uh, expectations are also so low very basic talking about delight seems a bit <laughs> exactly. out of place here exactly and like we'll get to delight man yeah. let's just get the I basics mean, you, i mean see even when i'm doing the research if I, let's say this context if i do a research would that be delightful for that you get an alert you say what delight actually man? you can't even call you it can't delight. even call it delight. so your you would your earlier question that how the research how this process yeah. changes the application of it changes that how you deal with this kind of situation how observant you have to be the emotions are so different so different yeah. so, see alert when it comes to your amazon packet delivered you even don't care how oh, about it okay oh, fine wow. but here you're waiting for the alert tell me what's yeah. happening what's on happening you're still that you know you're constantly looking at your phone like 20 years back the way you used you know, to wait for that one exactly. phone call yeah. yeah now you are you're still waiting for that to happen that's the difference that's crazy that's the difference of experience of people still have in this mature digital world Yeah. Uh, in health care because the minute you go into the hospital environment your emotional landscape completely changes right as really? an individual as a patient as a exactly. caregiver that's why i said that cognitive ab ab abilities of the people are physically and mentally uh, 80% lower are really down so you, that's where the safety and error prone situations become higher. more prone mm. because now in that you are not you're anxious your you're upset you're tired maybe you haven't even slept Are there some myths and misconceptions about doing design work in healthcare that you have encountered talking to people or having worked in this area? 
you know, people assume it should be like this, but then you have to kind of enlighten them on once one such was high on <laughs> innovation, <laughs> right, right. low on digitization. Exactly. I mean, one very common is like good design means jazzy visual and all of that, oh, which is still in healthcare. That's right? one. Which Definitely always, number one the on the list. Will remain there. Uh, UX in healthcare <laughs> is not about making pretty pictures. Exactly. So this, this you know, imagine an app which I'm creating. I can easily apply translucent images and nice and all. <laughs> but the, when I look at the safety aspect, yeah. it has, the font has to be big. I should only sh should show only two data points to wow. the user. What is your oxygen flow? What is your um, you know your breathing rate? That's it. That you know when, when clients give briefs, right? And you've heard this, Rishi, I'm sure, right? I want wow. I want wow. You can't translate that in healthcare to mean beautiful, fancy, jazzy, I don't deny that it can't be soothing. Huh, it should look ugly. Yeah. But the primary thing is it has to work for the reason it is yeah. supposed to be there. That is, has to be satisfied. Then you do on top of it whatever you want, mm. right? You can't compromise that mm. aspect. And if that is your priority, then of course everything else. But you have to convince folks around that. And now I think the in the people are getting mature about this mm. and understand the context and all. Much you, better. You've done projects in India, healthcare projects. No, 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 <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. Healthcare, not in India, okay. but US a lot. Yeah. So, what do you think would be the difference? In I don't think that we should be. But in terms mm. of people, you know, stakeholder expectations and all, mm. I don't think that would because people are quite mature now. Sure. They're using the same iPhone and all. People have grown up from mm. all of that task. But these questions will always mm. come back, come up. For, they yeah. still come up. I think per, you are doing a lot of consulting, yeah. consultancy now. Yeah. I can write a book. The <laughs> prioritization. Yeah, on this uh, yeah. word called wow. Exactly. And what it means, what right? It means, yeah. there, there is no debate on what wow means in healthcare. Like you yeah. said, right? It means it should work. That's what, whoever be on board on our team, we sell that safety first. Safety mm. first is your motto, right? Then everything else would happen, but you can't mm. compromise on that aspect for sure. Let me ask you about one more misconception that obviously we have heard in UX a lot. Uh, everything should be done in three clicks. What do you think about that in healthcare context? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give an example on this. So imagine we are, you know, actually not imagine we were doing this right project. So patient referral. So physician supposed to refer the yeah, patient to another, to, to another specialist, yeah, sure. specialist, specialist for the certain yeah. things. Right? You create an app hmm. which is easy click on a swipe. You can send a patient to the specialist. One click. One click, right? Oh possible. God. Doable. Very it's easy. possible, yes. Very easy. Yes. If you look at the whole ecosystem, you will you will create a havoc in that. Why? Because the specialist is a specialist. They should be taking care of very critical patients. Oh. If you just by your digital experience, uh -huh. you made it one click instead of you know they sending one one per, one patient to that which is most critical and should be attended by the specialist, they end up sending three. Oh. They will clog their calendar. And every and patient will suffer. Every patient will suffer. The person who is supposed to get the treatment mm, will not get will it. Not. And then the, it will go haywire. Wow. Yes, one click is yes, but it has to be contextualized to those tasks and all where it should mm. be applied. So sometimes reducing clicks is actually bad. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's required. Yeah. So like, it's very subjective. It's very subjective. Like, sometimes you know, more clicks is yeah. good because yeah. you are trying to ensure that people have gone through the due diligence and all the all the required steps Absolutely. before when making I, the I'm, decision. Yeah, when you as a physician, you're putting your dosage for injection to a patient, make that a biggest font to make sure that, you know, because it's a mm -hmm. dot, one decimal, two decimal, things can change, right? I was talking to my uncle who's a doctor and he told me that there is a pretty high percentage of patients who suffer because of mismanagement. Um, and I think in my view, mismanagement is not, is never intentional. I think it's a design problem. Exactly. Right, it's a design problem, it's a combination of all these things. Exactly. Poor system design, bad choice of fonts, poorly written copy. Very basic. Uh, yeah. Reliance on memory. I, I mean, I've heard stories about somebody in a hospital and the nurse came and gave uh, medicine to take and the patient is like, I, I just took it. Yeah. Which is like, oh, achha, sorry. Uh, right. oh. I mean, what if he had taken that dose again? So, the amount of things that are just being reliant on someone's memory is scary. Exactly. Honestly. Again, digital experience in healthcare context, particularly, right? You have to not think about just digital experience. You have to think about 
that whatever I'm designing is a tool I'm giving in the hand mm -hmm. of physician or a nurse to deliver care. Imagine a doctor without stethoscope mm -hmm. with an iPhone in hand now in future because you will have all the wearable devices on you. Yeah. I can see your heart rate, oxygen rate, everything on my mobile. Oh. I don't need to, you know, touch and do that kind of checkup probably mm. because of those variable devices which are going to be in future very mm. normal and real, right? Mm. So in those scenarios, if the point you're making, right, if that's not correct, digital, not digital mm. experience is all about, it's a tool. Or, to deliver. or the data might be correct, but you're reading it wrong. No, you're inferring yeah. the wrong, the, right. you know, conclusions, conclusions from it. Right. Or you're, you know, not focusing on the stuff that is important. Exactly. You miss out. Right. Which is what happens in poor data and, visualization. And, and the interesting part in healthcare is that you should not be looking at it because the healthcare is all about the touch, patient. Mm. your relationship with the patient. Mm. So you should not be looking at it. It's a tool, right? Mm. You, you have to give care. So the tool should allow me to focus more on the patient, more on the patient. and less on the tool. Exactly. Mm. Because if you make something, wow, this nice looking <laughs> interface yeah. and you get engrossed in there, yeah. somebody wow. else would suffer, right? So those are also important thing that, okay, this is just a tool. Mm. It's not the, the solution completely, right? The solution is out there. What are some of the recent trends or innovations that you've seen in UX design in the healthcare industry? I mean, you working in the US market, it's such a mature area. What are some of the things that, you know, you are excited about? See, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm very excited about the possibilities that Jenna would create. Oh, Jenna. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it will, it, it has a potential to, you know, converge everything, what we are thinking in the silo system into one area, if it is implemented well. Mm -hmm. Imagine that design, design folks who are part of the ecosystem create tools with Gen AI, which can create healthcare per, more personalized. So when you are taking the same medicine which I am taking over the counter, but the doses mm. are very different, which yeah. then I can inform. So you have to take a half a half a pill, and I have to take a full pill, whatever yeah. it might be, right? Yeah. So it, healthcare can be very personalized mm. with Gen AI thing, right? Mm. In healthcare, we are all you know to care is to be delivered, right? Now what it can predict, what can happen, yeah. how the condition so can go. So predictability goes high, right? And that if you look at link it with your variable te technologies nowadays, which is coming up, like you know, simple in COVID, that O2 yeah. became so popular, right? that measure your oxygen yeah. level, measure your oxygen level. That's a wearable device. Oh. If, if your wearable devices are connected. Or the sugar patch. Anything, mm. sugar patch, BP monitor, which are all Bluetooth mm. connected, all Wi-Fi connected in your home and all. Your physician, your care team can see how you're performing and they can alert you in advance. Sit down, your BP, your BP is going high, chances are I still that. haven't seen that one big mass adopted healthcare wearable that you know, is like the next big thing. Is that coming anytime soon? That's what I'm saying, that now with Gen AI and this, see the whole problem is that siloed hmm. system, right? Which is what blocks everything. Hmm. Plus there is a very important aspect is about uh, regulation. Yeah. HIPAA and your personal data and everything, compliance around that, that doesn't allow you to, mm -hmm. the way you can inter interact with the data and all of that. So that is also, you have to respect that because, you know, nowadays with the, with all this fraud and everything, yeah. your data gets stolen and then your uh, healthcare data, which is out, you know, that can be challenged. So I think that has to be mitigated. So all of that, but these trends can have a real, real potential around that. Wow. Sure. Wow. Are there certain opportunities that you feel are kind of missed opportunities in improving healthcare across the world that you know people are not looking at like areas that you feel like nobody is really kind of paying attention. The way I've seen so far, right? I think uh, most of the healthcare is invested into care delivery. Mm. I think what opportunity we have, we might have missed over the years now is that uh, keeping people healthy. Oh, preventive. Preventive. Mm. We have to keep, I mean, we are investing heavily. But there's so many fitness right? apps and, now, you know, like now. a million fitness apps. None of them work. But. None of them work, <laughs> right? And even medically, right? Clinically. Mm. How do I, if you put a lot of effort around that through doctor, through the system, by keeping people healthy, mm. I think it's a lot of cost saving alone and wow. a lot of, avoid a lot of suffering as well. So, right? you, so if, Rishi, you were to ever create a healthcare solution, it would be more in the preventive area? Talking about the missed opportunity, right? Mm. So that's that's where the thing is, right? Wow. How can I keep person healthy? How can I avoid them getting into serious mm. situation? How can I keep them outside? And that's a that's a that's in fear mm. of everybody. First of all, as an individual, you are not suffering, because the suffering in healthcare is personal, is yeah, physical. It is. 
right that is one biggest achievement second is then your the ecosystem is not pressured to take care of you know your illness then i can take care of the critical situation have you heard of this new area um, called digital therapeutics so it's like therapeutics that are delivered digitally mm-hmm. which can even get fda approvals yeah. right so i we recently um, built a digital therapeutic for a startup that is trying to um, help terminally ill cancer patients manage cancer through this so this is an app essentially that runs them through a fixed duration program okay uh, and it involves uh, behavioral therapy eastern philosophy western mm. um you know tools to help people you know manage their cancer and even maybe get better yeah yeah at a stretch and what i was really surprised to hear when i was speaking to the founder is that their whole goal was to get fd approval so that what that really means is your doctor will prescribe you an app an app just right. like they would prescribe you medicine yeah yeah that for me was quite mind boggling yeah the software as medical device smd is quite popular software as a medical yeah, device exactly. in, in a so, sense yeah that's exactly the point that you can manage the condition well through app right and now there's a second app they have to yeah. download in their system right that's it's true. because it's not yeah. uh, you know whole unified mm. so it's just one integrated unified holistic system exactly that would, that is not siloed exactly that connects all the dots because now for for keeping to manage my condition i have this app and then i had already had my patient portal <laughs> and i had my something and, else for something exactly, else exactly exactly that's actually so true and then imagine the patient like them it's very difficult for them yeah and we know that most of the population is aging population aging yeah so they are digitally now nowadays they are digitally quite well they are very well educated about digital things but still mm. not probably as as youngsters and all them so for them to have managed that's managers, true man and the ecosystem could be even challenging right so we're almost at the end rishi i want to ask you uh, a question from a segment we call unpopular opinion okay okay <laughs> what is the one thing that you consider as a fact that most people disagree with you on especially when it relates to designing for healthcare i'll go back to that discussion like you know that the wow thing is always <laughs> good looking stuff yeah. and you always need convincing with a lot of even people. in the healthcare industry even in the healthcare I, that's not good. which is not even like clients and all entire ecosystem is like mm. that which is changing now that people are talking about consumer grade experience in mm. healthcare but i think this one is also very important which could, which is well which is misunderstood consumer grade experience doesn't mean that consumerism wow which is mm. um, consumer get experience means that involving the people in the mm. game so that you design you know experience for them but mm. because the word consumer people think okay you know it has to be like netflix yeah. it has to be like so it has to be like netflix n- yeah. wow which is not consumerism consumerism means you have to take respect consumer their, friendly consumer f- and consumerism is two different things are two different things but unfortunately consumerism is all about you know has roots into commercialism yeah which can be very well under- misunderstood mm. and that's a trend now in healthcare that a lot of um, talent we are as coming from the consumer world oh. like ebay or amazon or you know your mm. netflix and those mm. kind of areas which is good yeah. because and on one side it's good because they bring with them that that expectation of ease of use yes. but i just i'm just kind of wary about that yeah, that but then the that pitfall, commercial yeah more uh, the pitfall around delight engagement exactly. rather yeah. than air prevention safety care delivery that mm. should not get overshadowed so that is something probably mm. uh, very difficult to convince and i'm very skeptical about that aspect well wow. yeah well i hope you make that unpopular opinion and popular one and on that note i want to thank you rishi maybe the yellow call should help in that <laughs> that's our job man. Thank, thank you so you. much for thank coming thank you very much for having me my pleasure my pleasure yeah